Welcome everyone to Money Mondays with Melissa. We have a few quick housekeeping items to cover before we begin, the first of which is to let you know that we are recording today's event, which will be made available for viewing on demand following the conclusion of the town hall. Everyone who registered to attend will receive an email link with a link after the conclusion. All participant lines are muted, so if you're having any technical issues, please use the chat feature to let us know and we'll try to assist you. We encourage you to use the same chat feature to submit any questions or comments you have during today's presentation. You can submit your questions at any time. We'll collect them and try to address as many as possible during that portion of the town hall. Any questions that we're unable to get to will be shared with Treasurer Conyers Irvin's staff who will follow up with you via email. Madam Treasurer, I'll now turn it over to you. Good afternoon and welcome to Money Mondays with Melissa. We are so excited about this series that we have been providing. We have had great, great um, panelists and thank you all for participating with us on this afternoon. Really for me, what being city treasurer means is first and foremost, working to protect your taxpayers' dollars in my role as the city's investment officer. But just as important is protecting taxpayers, is protecting Chicago's residents with financial health now and for the future. And I say for the future on purpose because we have to make certain that after this COVID-19 is over, where do we go from here? And that's why we've started these Money Mondays with Melissa, to make certain that all of us know about the various resources and strategies to keep our families, our businesses, and ourselves financially fit. And we know that's always challenging, but today, in the midst of COVID-19, with so many people um, either unemployed or reduced schedules, probably times are even more difficult. And so this COVID-19 pandemic has made it even more important to protect the financial health of your family and your business. We know that unemployment at all levels, um, really, we have not seen this since the Great Depression. And as always the case, is even higher in Black and Hispanic communities. And so we've created this Money Mondays with Melissa to put you in touch with even more resources and important vo voices that are leading the way during this crisis. And today I am pleased to welcome our three special guests. First, I am going to start with our Cook County State's Attorney, Kim Fox, whose office has been working to protect Cook County residents from scams during the pandemic. Um, State's Attorney Fox, thank you for joining us on this afternoon. And also, I am pleased that we have Kristen Faust, who is the Executive Director of the Illinois Housing Development Authority, which has been working to provide Illinoisans with information about housing security. Kristen, thank you for being with us on this afternoon. Good afternoon, thank you. And finally, at this time, um, also, we have our Senator, U.S. Senator, um, Tammy Duckworth, who is pushing tirelessly for funding for Illinoisans and minority small business owners. Thank you, Senator Duckworth, for joining us on this afternoon. It's good to be on. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll jump right into questions. Thank you for those that were waiting on us to get started. We're going to join, jump right into questions. Also, a quick reminder that as we're providing um, this panel, you're going to see within the chat function, we'll be providing contact information of our guests on today. So, Senator Duckworth, let's jump right into you, because certainly we've all been watching the news. $3 trillion, is that what I've heard for the, for the relief package that the House passed that is going over to the Senate? But just in general. Talk to us, Congress has passed two rounds of relief. What kind of economic relief and financial assistance is Congress pushing for? And I know we hear a lot about the HEROES Act. So if you can elaborate on that, um, I know there's so much information you can provide <laughs> helpful to those that are listening. Hi everyone, first off, uh, hi from my dining room table. You may see my mother in the background cooking lunch for my girls. So I apologize for that. Don't my apologize. five-year-old is running in and out. So <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I have not seen uh, the complete um, text of the House bill that they passed at the end of last week, the three 
trillion dollar bill. Um, I can tell you what my priorities has been in both the two previous bills that we passed, as well as the current one that we're negotiating in the Senate, and it's working families. It's working families and our, and our uh, underserved populations and our first responders. That's really where my priorities are. Um, in the first bill, as you know, the PPE, the Paycheck, Paycheck Protection Plan was abused by the large banks and large corporations. So we came back in the second bill and put guardrails around it. We set aside uh, 70 billion specific, specifically to be lent out by small banks and credit unions and community banks. And that really made a big difference. 10 billion of that 70 was supposed to go out in direct grants to small businesses. So that made a big difference. And that is, um, I wanna add more to that program for this next round um, of negotiations. I also want protections, uh, OSHA protections for first responders. And by them, I don't mean just the doctors and the nurses and, and the clinicians in our hospitals because they are heroic um, beyond measure. But it's also the janitors who clean those hospital rooms. It is the cashier at, at my local grocery store. It's the person at the McDonald's drive through that keeps my kids supplied with my chicken McNuggets. That's <laughs> some days that's all they will eat. Um, these folks never, ever, ever signed up to be on the front lines of a global pandemic, and yet they are. And so I wanna make sure that we, I'm fighting to um, pass legislation that would add uh, $15 uh, an hour to their pay, um, up to, I believe it's gonna be 25,000 was the last negotiating point uh, per year. Um, we also are creating a fund um, that will be based on the HEROES Fund that was set up for the um, post 9-11 firefighters. So that if you are an, an essential worker and you um, fall ill to this pandemic and God forbid you pass away, your families will receive compensation out of that fund. And by essential workers, as I said, it's not just doctors and nurses, it's also the UPS delivery man who comes in or the person who has to show up to work um, because they've been told you, you need to show up. Um, we need you to clean those hospital rooms. We need you to come to the nursing home and take care of um, somebody's grandma. Um, and so we wanna make sure those folks are, are protected. Then I also wanna make sure we set aside money in this next bill for our hospitals, especially um, our community health centers and our hospitals that are in underserved areas. Um, and make sure that we also provide funding that goes more funding that goes directly to states and local municipal governments as well. So it's both the big picture stuff, but then it's also trying to target um, everything that we can to those um, working families that are really struggling right now. That is awesome. And, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking about the news about you recently, and we know that you are working to help change the leadership of the country. And I'm, I'm just appreciating your dialogue of working families, working families, working families. And um, I'm going to ask our next guest a question, but this really leads me to the importance of having people that are like us, people that are working families. You, you spoke about your daughter in McDonald's. I mean, this is something that we understand because this is something that you experience. And when you experience it firsthand, you are clear on who it is that you're fighting for. So really thank you for that. I know that that it has not been easy for the role that you have been providing um, as a U.S. Senator. And so we really thank you for the work that you have been doing and will continue to do on our behalf. And thank so- you. Thank that you. Leads, Our kids are about the same age, your daughter and mine, so. <laughs> yes, and I, I just told everyone my daughter is four years old today. So there you go. Oh, happy birthday. And I remember we were, we were expecting around the same time, so yeah. yeah. So, uh, which leads me to another working mother that I have on the phone, our state's attorney, Kim Fox. And um, certainly she has been working diligently even before this pandemic. And last week, Attorney Fox, we, on our webinar, we had a credit counseling firm. And they spoke about how during a pandemic such as this, we have to be even more careful, careful of scammers, especially for our, our most vulnerable, vulnerable population. Can you tell us about what you've seen? Um, has there been an increase in bad actors who are trying to take advantage of people right now during this pandemic? And how can we protect 
um, people and residents um, against these scams. Gotta unmute. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Treasurer, for having me. It's always an honor and a privilege to be um, in your presence working on behalf of the people and to be on this distinguished panel uh, with Kristen and Senator Duckworth, who is all over the news these days, and we could not be more excited uh, for her this week. Um, you are absolutely right in, in why this service that you're doing on Money Mondays uh, means so much, is that as we are grappling with the effects of COVID-19 and how it has decimated our economy, and as the Senator has just talked about what the impact that it's had on working families, in the chaos and confusion, the sad reality is that there are people who want to take advantage of that. They know that people are scared. They know that people are looking for answers. They know uh, that there has been confusion coming from all levels of government. And there are people who will use this time to take advantage, particularly of our most vulnerable. We're talking about our seniors, for example. Um, and we've seen it across the board. Uh, we've seen as the first round of stimulus checks were coming out, we knew that there were gonna be people who knew that there were families who were gonna receive checks in the mail and were doing whatever they could to get a hold of those checks. We've seen uh, things, for example, with price gouging uh, as the demand for toilet paper, hand sanitizer, hand soap. Uh, we saw people who were hoarding these uh, items and then uh, trying to sell them for five, 10, 15 times uh, their value. Uh, we've seen things like people promising cures, right? If people are afraid as we see the, the horrific daily death counts come. There have been scammers who've reached out to folks and said, you know, we have access to, you know, medicines or cures that give us your money, we can do this. And so it is not new, uh, the sad reality, people taking advantage of people in the middle of crisis. And so we've been working in our consumer fraud unit uh, to identify those who are engaged in this type of behavior, working with the Illinois Attorney General's office and community groups to one, make sure that people know that they can reach out to our office at cookcountystatesattorney.org. Um, if they have questions or concerns, we have a, a form on our website that people can fill out uh, and let us know. Uh, and the education piece matters because what happens is people, when they're taken advantage of, don't want to tell anyone, right? They, there, there's a lot of embarrassment that comes if someone um, feels as though someone is, is taking advantage of them. And where, where I came from, it was like, if you got hustled, you weren't trying to tell everybody that you got hustled. And these folks thrive on people's silence. They thrive on people having lost the money and being embarrassed and not telling. But with this information, we're able to work with law enforcement to be able to take down those who are uh, preying on our most vulnerable communities. I'm on mute too. That is, that is awesome. Thank you. And, and we know that even before the pandemic that we had concerns with scammers and when we know that even right now it's, it's at an all time high. Okay. So thank you for that. And we're going to elaborate a little bit more on price gouging because I know that's important to the attendees on the line as well. Um, I want to piggyback a little bit on what Senator Duckworth was, was speaking on with um, working families. And Kristen, I'm going to jump right into you because um, you are the executive director for Illinois um, Housing Development Authority. And we have several people on the line, and by the way, already questions about what assistance is there for those that are struggling to pay their mortgages right now? Is there relief available? If so, what can they do? And I know that even before the um, Illinois Housing Development Authority, you had experience through local neighborhood housing agencies. So please give us um, some, some advice as to what not only mortgage holders, but those that hold mortgages in our landlords. I've seen several questions already for landlords where tenants are not able to pay their rent. Landlords are struggling to pay their mortgages. So this is twofold. Um, it includes all those that are paying mortgage mortgages, but also we want to speak to landlords and their relief. Thank you, Kristen. 
Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer Conyers Urban. It's such a pleasure to be here today to be uh, with this great panel and to have a chance to share some information. So, first of all, if you are having trouble paying your mortgage or think you might have trouble, the first thing I want to encourage you to do is actually file for unemployment. And you might be surprised at that first answer. But um, right now, there is no specific federal money to help people that's targeted just for people to pay their mortgages, right? Instead, the Congress, and thank you, Senator Duckworth, the Senate um, passed a very generous unemployment bill that's good through the end of July where you get an extra $600 a week. So anybody that is eligible or you, you think you might be eligible, encourage you to apply and go get your unemployment because then that's going to allow you to pay your mortgage. And I know that's been a little slow, but IDES has been working really hard. They're getting better every day. You will get served if you go online and file. Um, please, please try and make that happen. Um, the second is, of course, to get your stimulus. Because you, right now, again, there isn't immediate assistance in, um, in terms of your specific mortgage payment. It's coming through unemployment. The second thing to do, and Attorney General Fox just mentioned it, is don't um, the, reach out for help. So where do you reach out for help? So the first place I wanna encourage you to reach out is actually to a HUD certified housing counselor. There are HUD certified counseling agencies across the state of Illinois, across the city, across the county, across the region. You can find them on our website at ida.org and you click on home ownership and then financial literacy and counseling and you can put in your zip code and you can find one near you. These organizations, they help you understand your budget. They help you talk about getting help with your lender, which I'm getting to in a minute, about um, talking to your lender about getting some help on your mortgage. And um, they also run great trainings. They are free. The HUD certified mortgage counselors are free. Occasionally they charge a small fee for a class, but the general counseling is free. They have taken classes, they're educated, they're certified, those organizations. So I really encourage you to reach out. And in the last housing crisis, we saw people that were too ashamed because they couldn't pay their mortgage and they didn't reach out until it was too late. And then we, they lost their homes. And so don't do that this time. This is, we are all in this together. This is a national, international, you know, pandemic. And so reach out for help. So um, then you're going to absolutely call your lender slash servicer and tell them, I lost my job. I have fewer hours. I can't make my mortgage payment. Can you help me? If your mortgage is um, held by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, some of the other government entities that are in the mortgage market, if you ask for that and are approved, you will have forbearance for up to 180 days and that can be extended for another 180 days. So you could have forbearance for up to a year if your mortgage is held by one of those governmental um, entities. How do you know if it's held by one of those governmental entities? You go to the website makinghomeaffordable.gov and you type in information and, and you will find out. And then you know you can apply and get that forbearance. If it's not held by um, one of those governmental entities, work with your housing counseling agency and still and call your lender and talk to them. It's in everyone's best interest to work with you right now. And then the last thing I just want to say about this, though, is forbearance is not forgiveness. And there is confusion about that. And we've had people call us. And so forbearance means you will still owe the money, but you don't have to pay it right now. And so Fannie and Freddie, if your mortgage is held by them, just came out and said, what we're going to do is once you start working again, um, we're going to tack your mortgage payments onto the end of your mortgage. And when you sell your house or refinance your house, you'll have to pay it then. Um, other lenders, we don't know yet what they're going to do. Are they going to spread it out, add a little extra to your mortgage payment every month? How are they going to do it? But again, it's in everyone's best interest to keep you in your house. Ida is fully dedicated to keeping every homeowner as much as possible in their house. We need, um, 
yeah, we believe in homeowners and we want to keep everybody in their house. So, um, so please reach out to your lender, reach out to a HUD certified housing counselor. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help. You are very likely to get forbearance. And then just remember that it, you will have to pay eventually, but the goal is that we're, they want to give you time to get back um, employed again and able to pay again. Hope that was helpful. Yes, and Kristen, for clarification, when you spoke about um, unemployment, you were speaking about, for, you said for landlords or those that are holding mortgages that are struggling, you are referring to people that are unemployed though, right? Yeah, I was, a, it, because most people cannot pay their mortgages right now because they lost, you know, their jobs or their decreased hours. Now, I didn't speak specifically to the the landlords that you talked about, like you owe a four, own a four flat or something like that, what are you going to do? You might want to um, work. You you want to work something out with your tenant. They've been a good tenant. You know they're in hard times, but you have your mortgage to pay. Well, you need to do the same thing. Go find out who owns your mortgage and um, see if you can get into forbearance as a landlord. So that's absolutely a solution. And then. Um, explore. I cannot answer this. Actually, I, I don't know the full answer to this. Um, explore whether you are eligible for a PPP loan. I'm not sure about that for a small landlord like that. A, a we're going to let Senator Duckworth um, jump in. I have a question. I know she wants to piggyback on your, your response, and then I have a follow-up question. But in the meanwhile, I know that people are putting into the chat feature asking about your websites and contact information. Our staff will routinely throughout this call be certain to put that in the chat function. Also, after this webinar, you will receive an email. Everyone that registered for this will receive an email with contact information for all of the panelists. So don't worry, you will get that information. Um, but, but one thing that Kristen said that I want to stress, and I'm going to move it back to Senator Duckworth, if you can pay your bills, pay them. One mm -hmm. of the things that we are so seeing during a time such as this, there are so many relief options that a lot of people are choosing to take advantage of the relief options, which is there for a reason and we're grateful for them. If you cannot pay your bills, absolutely, there are relief options. But understand, understand that delay does not mean forgiveness. So that means that if you do not pay now, you will have to pay later. Obviously, if you can't pay, that's what the resources and the delay payment is for. But if you can pay, please do so. Because what we don't want to see is after this pandemic, you're in an even worse shape because you have double and triple bills that are due because you delay payment. Again, if you have to, work out the payment um, arrangements. But certainly, if you can pay your bills, do so. Senator, I want you to piggyback on um, what Kristen said, but in doing so, can you also include information about help for small businesses, what they are going through through this economic hardship? Um, I know you probably want to talk, talk back to the PPP that Kristen was talking about, and I know that goes to small businesses, and we spoke a little bit about mortgage holders and, and landlords and things of that sort, but People now, we've, saw, we've seen even large corporations with enormous resources that are struggling. And so we know that it's certainly hard for small business owners, people that are unemployed, mortgage holders. What can you tell us and what advice can you provide to those that are listening? Well, I just have to piggyback on what Kristen said, which is apply for your unemployment insurance do it. Get it. Get that money. Um, and if you um, haven't applied for uh, uh, your um, your stimulus payment, you need to go get that as well. And you can go to the web page. Well, we'll provide you with the link and to check and see where that payment is. Most people should have received it by now. Um, uh, that is twelve hundred dollars uh, per person, uh, plus five hundred dollars for every child um, seventeen and under. Um, that is your dependent. So there is money there to help and you should know that we are working to include more of that money, um, more money, uh, a second round of payments and hopefully uh, we Democrats can win that argument. So we're, we're gonna push hard for it um, here in the Senate. Um, if you are a business owner, please, please, please go ahead and fill in the forms and, and fill in for the um, IDLE, uh, the Economic Injury Grant that's available through the Small Business Administration. That's a 
10, that's a loan program where you can borrow up to $2 million, but the first 10,000 of that is free. It's a grant you don't have to pay back. So at the very least, apply for that $10,000. You don't have to apply for 2 million, just apply for the $10,000 grant. And you will get that within three days of putting in the application form online and it, and it being approved. So that is something where you can get help right away if you're a small business owner. And then the PPP program, which is the Paycheck Protection Program, which provides um, uh, small businesses with uh, loans, as long as you keep your employees and bring them back to work at the end of the process, 95% um, of the, your loan that you get will be forgiven. So it's almost free money. It's, it's, it's um, to help you stay solvent. And we're working to extend that program, um, keep it going, but then also extend the deadlines for payback as well, because it's looking like this pandemic is not going to end anytime soon, and that businesses will have a long time period where they're transitioning, even after we reopen the economy, people are not going to be going flocking to restaurants, for example. So we know that people are going to have to have a little extra time to get back on their feet in terms of their businesses. But the key thing is that money is out there. Please apply for it and get in the queue because we're trying to get more money into the system and we'll get more money into the system with this next bill as soon as we can get it passed out of the Senate. Great. And then also, I know that some people were asking about their stimulus check. As you mentioned, most people should have received it by now if they have not. And we'll provide that the website um, and phone number through the chat. But there is a way to contact to find out the status, right? Because some people say they go to the website and it just says pending and they don't know what to do from there. Right. Well, you can go in and out. Well, I've been I've been checking for quite a few of my. Well, I, I checked for my mother, who's seventy nine years old, and some of my elderly relatives. Um, and so I've seen a whole variety of messages. Some of them say pending, but most of them have all now switched to telling you when your check was mailed or when the direct deposit is scheduled to happen if it has not already happened. So you should go check. Within the last week, I would say that they've upgraded, they've updated the information on, on that. You have to sign in as yourself based on your name, your social security number, and your address, um, and you'll be able to get that information. And, okay. then you, and then you can at least know, uh oh, they sent a check to an old address, and you can uh, you know, contact the people at that old address, make sure you get your check. And I guess if it's still saying pending, they just have to give it a couple of days, maybe. I've, because I think there's a cutoff, isn't it, or something? There was a cutoff. Um, that was last weekend. But um, I, I think that most of those uh, pending should have flipped over with a date. Um, yes. If you put everything in in time, and, and you didn't actually have to go to that web page and fill anything in. If you've been paying your taxes, uh, if you filed tax returns in either um, uh, 2018 or 2019, you didn't actually have to do anything. It'll go to the bank account where you got your refund or it will go to the address, um, your last known address with the IRS. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Very helpful. And again, to the those that are listening, we will provide um, the information. I see the website went up. And let's, let's move back to the price gouging, state's attorney, because there's been several questions on price gouging. And you mentioned this a little bit before. Um, we know that there are some products like not just masks, but um, we hear stories on social media about food prices in addition to cleaning products like um, Clorox wipes, sanitizers. What should consumers do if they feel that they are victims of price gouging? This is wow. Yeah, so I mean, and I want to be clear, there's a difference between prices that are going up because of supply and demand needs, given everything that's happening with the pandemic and actual uh, people trying to take advantage of people because of price gouging. And so our office is working with our local and federal partners on this. Um, you know, there's a federal statute related to price gouging that we work uh, in conjunction with our federal partners, as well as the Illinois Attorney General's office. If you have a concern that you've uh, been seeing at stores or you know something is happening, you again can come to our website um, and contact us and we can work with our partners to be able to see how best to address that. Uh, but prices are going up, but we wanna make sure that people aren't taking advantage. And I want to piggyback off of something that um, the senator just said. Uh, as you're checking on and making sure uh, that you're getting your stimulus check and the like, 
Uh, that's where we find people who, you know, are anxious to find where their money is. Someone may reach out and send you a text message that says, Have, haven't received your stimulus check. Um, hit this link with your social security number. We'll look it up for you. No one should be asking you affirmatively for your social security number. Um, they, she, she said, if you're going to the IRS website, the certified IRS website where you may have to enter that, um, that's one thing, but a lot of what's happening with scammers who know that people are awaiting these checks, who know that people have these concerns, are using the uh, emails, the internet, and text messaging to reach out to you to say to you, give me your social security number. We know that this is incredibly dangerous because that social security number holds the key uh, to those federal resources that have just been identified. As the senator said, uh, the money that comes from uh, the stimulus package is if you have a direct deposit that's on file, will automatically go to that direct deposit or be mailed to you. One of the other things that we're seeing and we want to tell people do not do, don't give out your bank routing number. Um, again, people will say, hey, we'll send you a note that says we, we tried to send you your check, but your routing number was off um, and ask them to send it back. So do not share your routing number. Do not share your social security number. Um, go to verified government websites to talk about that, but do not share with unsolicited people who are reaching out to you. I was trying to mute while my daughter was coming down. So please give me a moment. I'm, I'm sorry, everyone. I have a question that I'm going to ask of you, Kristen, and then I have a final question for our Senator before she drops off. Um, Kristen, right now, we know that a lot of people are worried about their credit scores, especially even right now. Um, we know that people are taking on more debt to cover expenses and they're worried about paying their bills. Why is this so important to keep an eye on your credit score right now? And how can people prevent their scores from being negatively impacted? So you are so right on, it is so important to have as strong a credit score as you can now and always. Um, right now, in the past, credit scores were a little more private and they might have impacted your home mortgage rate, but now they impact everything. The rate you get on your car loan, the rate you get on your mortgage loan, whether you might get a job, many employers now look at your credit score. So credit scores are made up of three major components, on-time payments, um, how long you've had credit, and also what percent of the credit that you have you're using. So you don't, haven't had credit for a long time, that's all right, start now, start today. You gotta start somewhere. Um, On-time payments, I know those can be challenging right now. What do you do? You communicate again. Like if you were, um, you, I asked you to communicate with your um, mortgage holder, if you were a homeowner here, if it's credit cards, reach out to your credit card company. A lot of them will work on a plan with you. And if you work on a plan and hold to it, that won't really impact your credit score. And then the third thing that people don't realize is that actually it's percent of debt use also. So if your credit card is a 1200 max, and if, if you max it up only up to like 400 and then pay it down or 400 pay it down, you will have a higher credit score than the person who runs that credit card up to 1000 or 1200 and up to the max. So keep those things, um, um, in mind. Two, go back to those HUD um, certified um, housing counseling agencies I told you about. They are financial literacy experts too. They will help you address problems with your credit. They can help put you on um, kind of a disciplined plan, walk you through your budget to get your credit score up. And then three, and, um, and again, they do that for free. There are places and people that will charge you for it. Do not pay anybody to raise your credit score. You can do this. You can do this with the help of those free HUD certified counseling agencies. You can do this by educating yourself as well. How do you educate yourself? You read. Um, I just think of three of kind of my personal money gurus. They are um, Michelle Singletary, who's out of Washington DC, writes uh, really great financial advice columns all the time. Uh, Susie Orman has always been a favorite of mine. Terry Savage, our own local Terry Savage. Those are just three. They offer websites, free articles, books you can get out the library. 
we live in a capitalistic market-driven society and some would argue hyper-capitalistic right now. The message, it's caveat emptor, buyer beware. It is incumbent on all of us to educate ourselves on how to be savvy financial consumers. So work on your credit score, get some help from a HUD certified um, counseling agency, read up, and in no time you will find yourself getting saving lots of money because you're going to get better interest rates on your car loan on your home mortgage loan and so thank you so much that is that was a lot of information that was awesome thank you um senator duckworth um, i want to ask you two final questions on this afternoon um, as we know that even during a pandemic, and you know that as you spoke the beginning of the recording about lunch being prepared um, for your children in the background, we know that even during a pandemic, life goes on. Luckily for all of us, you know, babies are being born every day. And the CARES Act, it provides an additional credit for parents, but that's based on last year's taxes which excludes those babies that are born this year. Is Congress doing anything to provide additional assistance um, for those parents? That's number one. And number two, we know that you, like millions of Illinoisans right now, are suddenly finding yourself in the role of teacher to your young children. And it's really hard, as I know firsthand, especially when you're trying to balance everything and especially when a young lady like you whom we know has been in the news recently um, of some real changes um, <laughs> in, as far as leadership of our country. Um, so I want you to kind of give some advice for parents that's trying to juggle it all as you definitely know firsthand. So those two final questions. Thank you, Melissa. Boy, you uh... You hit me, gave me a softball, then hit me with a hardball. So I got to watch out for you, man. You got that chain, change up coming <laughs> my way. Um, so yes, I introduced legislation. Um, uh, I actually just introduced legislation to allow p um, parents of babies who were born in 2019, I'm sorry, in 2020 to claim the $500 dependence uh, 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 payment. Um, because as far as the IRS is concerned, those babies don't exist until you claim them on your taxes next year. And so uh, I've introduced legislation, um, it's bipartisan. So Tim Scott of North Carolina joined me on that. And, um, and we're going to be able to, and Mike Braun and also Amy Klobuchar, um, but Tim Scott was the first on board. And we've introduced it and I'm fairly confident that it will pass. Um, and that will, um, here in the next couple of weeks, and that will allow parents who had babies that were born this year. So in that, in addition to that $1,200 you got for yourself, $1,200 you got for your spouse and 500 for each child, you'll now be able to get an additional 500 for each child who was born this year. Um, so look for that to come about here sometime fairly quickly. I'm pushing it pretty hard. There's been no opposition to it so far. It doesn't cost any additional money. It's good common sense legislation. It was just something that, the, that it, people overlooked. Um, and then I got some calls from, from constituents who said, hey, I can't, I can't claim my child. And so we're taking care of that. Um, and then, you know, the, what we're trying to do for this country is, is we, we've got a lot of hard work in front of us and we just have to work together and, and, and move forward. Um, we do have um, uh, more work to do in terms of the stimulus money. We have more work to do in terms of making some really big investments in this country. Um, some of my priorities are, of course, um, are, are as I said, small businesses and working families, but I'm also pushing really hard on um, environmental justice because um, I do think that right now the hardest hit communities for COVID-19 are black and brown communities. For example, African-Americans are only 15% of the population in Illinois and yet are over 36% of the COVID-19 positive cases. Um, there's several thing, reasons for that. One is environmental injustice because uh, black and brown communities are where we have put our most um, toxic and polluting um, industries for years. So we have higher rates of asthma, we have higher rates of diabetes, we have higher rate of lung disease among black and brown communities, um, which makes, those, makes folks much more susceptible to the effects of COVID-19. But then also if you are um, a working family and you're, you know, and you work in a nursing home, you got to go up to work and you're more likely to be exposed to this virus as well. So we need to work on in terms of getting more help to our communities of color and help to um, all of the healthcare facilities in our communities of color and make sure that 
um, we prioritize those communities first and that we prioritize working families over everything else. And so we're gonna keep fighting and we're gonna keep working on it. Um, and you know, uh, the, the last group of folks, um, as you were talking about our teachers, it is really, really tough right now. I mean, she's five and she had a pre, -K, she has four pre-K Zoom conference calls with her teacher a week. It's nuts. Um, and I just got off of that at 1230 and I, that's why I was a little late hopping on the call with you guys because um, I was, I was cleaning, I was trying to switch over from my homeschooling <laughs> to this. <laughs> um, and what I, my advice to parents is, yeah, just be kind to yourself. Try to do it. But if, if there's a day when you just can't do it, you know what, let your kids skate for the day. Um, but just try to do a little something every day and we'll get through that. And, and, and when you have a chance, send a nice thank you note to their ki your kid's teacher and say, oh my God, I'm so grateful for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely just love everything that you just said. The fact that you showed us the desk of your house, the fact that you spoke about five minutes late coming on this call because you had to finish something with your, your daughter's class, a lot of people would not even believe that you as Senator, you being U.S. Senator, you being one of the ones in the line for what I was talking about with the leadership of the country and things that, that's going on in the news about you right now, that you just got off of a Zoom call with your daughter in her class. I absolutely love everything you just said. I need you to know that. Well, thank you. You you and me are the same. We're moms, you know, and Kim did this too. Her kids are, are bigger. <laughs> her kids are bigger, but you know, all these moms on this call went through this. You all know the reality of this, you know? There are gonna be days the kids are getting nuggets because I ain't making a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> Senator Duckworth. Love it. Oh, we are just so happy and we're so proud of you, U.S. Senator, for everything that you are doing on our behalf. And I know that you have to jump off because from things that we're hearing in the news, you're busy. You're a busy lady these days. So good luck to you. And um, we will be talking with you soon. For those that are on the line, don't worry. We have her information for you. Thank, thank you. you, everyone. Sorry I have to go. That's Take okay. Care. Good luck. And thank you for thank the work you. you're doing. Thank you. All right. So as we move on to um, our next question, I want to make certain that I let the panelists know that someone said not only moms, but dads too. Thank you, dads, for what you are doing right now. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, but we want to make certain that you know that we are going to provide contact information for all of the guests on today through your email because you registered and we have your email address and we'll send you follow-up information. So don't worry if you hear websites and you're like, what did they say? You'll get that information later. Okay, now let's move on to my last questions for State's Attorney and um, Executive Director Kristen. And so I wanna ask State's Attorney, we, we spoke a lot this afternoon. It's been such great information that's been provided. Um, a lot of people may be having trouble paying their utility bills. Yes. Let's talk about that. Is there any protection from this connection right now? And how can people protect themselves from all of the scammers who are pretending to be utility company representatives? Yeah, so I'm just gonna repeat what you've heard Kristen say earlier, reach out to the utility companies. Um, our office generally doesn't have any regulation or any oversight of the utility companies, but we know, uh, as was said earlier, if you reach out to them and tell them what your struggles are, they are willing to work with you. Some of the things that have been halted in Cook County uh, during COVID have been uh, evictions. Um, you know, eviction court has put a moratorium on people being evicted from their homes. Um, and again, a lot of conversation I'm hearing between landlords and people who are renting um, and, and making sure that landlords even know that there's an, a moratorium on evictions right now. Uh, but if, if you believe that there is a uh, someone pretending to be a utility company reaching out to you, I will say what I've said throughout this call, uh, reach out to our office, reach out to our website, 
Um, and again, our Special Prosecutions Bureau, our Consumer Fraud Unit, working with law enforcement can help. You can also call uh, 311. I know there's a lot of concern that people have about calling local law enforcement right now and not wanting to tax our resources, but call 311 to let people know. If you get a suspicious text message, you know, take a screenshot of that text message. That te text message says to you, that has a link, reach out to us about your utility, reach out to us about your stimulus package, reach out to us. Take a picture of that so that you can provide that information to um, not only our office, but our partners so that we can be able to reach out to them as well. But as was said before, and why this is such a wonderful thing that you're doing, Melissa, is that there is a ton of resources to help people bridge this time. But the number one thing that you have to do is reach out, reach out. Uh, you know, all of the utilities know that people have been laid off. All of the utilities know that people are suffering. And so I know that there had been some movement throughout the county uh, to slow shutoffs, to make sure that people weren't being shut off in this time period. Uh, but to get the specific facts of each utility, just reach out to the person who holds that bill. And let me ask you this, how are you all making it even right now? Um, we see the beautiful background that you have yes. here and um, not just you, but your staff. Yeah. You know, how are you all managing the workloads even during a time like this where everyone can't be in the office? It's not safe and you know, not healthy. How, how are you all managing this? Yeah, it's, uh, these are unprecedented times and I have to remind everyone who is doing this work um, from home to give ourselves grace and to the people that we serve. Um, there's a measure of grace that we have to have in doing this. If you would have told me in March that we would not be able to go into our office for a couple of months with just a day or two notice and still run the largest um, unified court system in the world, uh, and try to figure out not just how to manage what's happening with the jails and the court, but a staff of 1,200 people and people who we have to serve. Uh, the fact is, over the last nine weeks, we've been moving, growing. Uh, there have been hiccups. Uh, but first and foremost has been our priority to making sure our communities are safe, uh, making sure, because we know, as we talk about all of the financial anxiety that people have, and people are sheltering in place. There are folks who, for example, um, you know, incidents of domestic violence. We know domestic violence incidents go up when there is high anxiety and stress, and there's nothing more stressful and anxiety-ridden than this. And so our, we still have people who are manning the domestic violence courts, who are working with victims of domestic violence to get emergency orders of protection, our victim witness unit is still up and running and available, taking calls from home to refer victims of crime to services and resources in their neighborhoods. Um, we know child abuse uh, is still happening and children who would want to be able to get a reprieve by going to school, um, they're still suffering. So we're still working with DCFS. Uh, we still have our lawyers working on that on the ground. And we are, uh, we're adapting. And it is, as you mentioned earlier with, with the senator and, and you as treasurer, me as state's attorney, I, I have my lawyers who are being moms and teachers, dads and teachers, caregivers, um, spouses who have lost their jobs. And so I just, it's a reminder to everyone that this hits all of us. Um, mental health, it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, you know, we, 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 even as the people, who are responding to the crisis are vulnerable right now. And so we, we're trying, you know, the, the, I'm, you see me looking out the corner of my eye, I have four teenage girls who are ready to like Zoom bomb to me any moment. Uh, so I'm like keeping my dukes up ready for that. Uh, but a grace that we all have because literally this is not a, this is happening to them over their situation. It's happening to all of us. And, and we want to make sure at the state's attorney's office that we're accessible, available. You know, even though we're working remote, if you have questions, concerns, please reach out. Um, don't wait for the full reopening. Reach out, go to our website. If you have concerns about consumer fraud, consumer protection, if you are a victim of violent crime, pick up the phone, call 911. Uh, we are here for you. 
Oh my gosh, that was so heartfelt, especially the four teenage girls that are like, you know, mommy, mommy, everyone wants to know. Yes, they want a piece of you too. And so you're trying to manage it all. And I certainly can appreciate, we had a dynamic team with four women on the call on today. And, and, and our attendees are seeing firsthand what this means. This is our reality. And a lot of people do not think that this will be our reality too, but we're just like them. So thank you for that. So even right now, people can go onto your website can they call still? How does that work? They can still call. Uh, again, if you are a victim of crime, something just happened to you, call local law enforcement first and foremost. Um, we respond to law enforcement. If you have a case that has been pending, if you you know, want to know, hey, I was supposed to go to court a couple weeks ago. That court date got pushed off. Our victim witness staff is still up and running. We'll be able to give you some information about how we will let you know about when court is running. But yes, um, if you go to our website, it, depending on what your issue is, it lists the phone numbers for all the units within our division. You can reach out and call uh, five days a week. We Just just because we're working from home, we still have uh, people who are, are, are off on the weekend. That's amazing. And then one person asked a question. I'm going to go into my last question for you, Kristen. And, and one person asked a question of, do we know when this moratorium on evictions is up? Um, I think it has been aligned with what's been happening with the state stay at home order. And so I think we'll get further clarity as that goes. But right now, uh, it is at least until May 30th. Makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you so much. And Kristen, our final question. Um, I want to ask you, th this is just a, a final general question for renters. Some may be wondering right now, is this a good time to buy a house? And I actually had a segment on this with ABC7 and talking about this because I said, you know, during this COVID-19, there could be one good thing that come out of it. And so if you could kind of elaborate on for renters, whether this is a good time to purchase a home. That's such a great question. So, so the answer is, of course, it depends. Ultimately, you as a renter, you have to make that decision for yourself. You have to look at your finances. You have to figure out, your, get, make sure your credit score is strong. But one thing I know for sure, this is a great time to start getting ready to be a homeowner. It's a great time to explore it. It's a great time to go back to those housing counseling agencies and take their home buyer education class. I don't care if you have a PhD or a GED, you need to take this home buyer education class. You can take it online without a human being in front of you, or now, you know, whether it's Spanish Coalition for Housing or Urban League or any of the other great counseling agencies, they're offering online classes where you can hear other people's questions and have a live teacher. Take that class. Buying a house is going to be probably the biggest purchase you ever make in your life. But I have to tell you, you'd be surprised. I'm surprised, but it's happening. At Ida, we work with banks across the state to offer mortgage lending and down payment assistance. We have just had the highest volume we have had in over a decade in the last three months. People are out there buying homes. I think two things. One, sheltering at place is kind of giving us a new perspective on home. And I think maybe this is, I haven't read this anywhere, it's just my thought, is kind of making people think about owning again. And then, um, Secondly, the rates are low and, um, you know, people are just ready to make this move. And so we, I really want to encourage people to prepare themselves, you know, take a class, read up and um, think about buying the, uh, again, our program that we work with banks across the city and across the state. You can go on our web website at ida.org and we'll put the information out there so you can contact those lenders. Um, but I think this could, I know, I can't tell you that you should buy a house, but I can say this is a great time for you to ready yourself for that, prepare yourself and explore that possibility. Wonderful. And let me say this, when Kristen is saying Ida, that is Illinois Housing Development Authority. 
Mm -hmm. um, just want to be clear on that. And we are providing the contact information in the chat feature. What I will also say to piggyback in closing, Kristen, is that we do know that the interest rates are competitively low right yeah. now. And so people on the line should know that not only for purchasing a mortgage, but for refinancing, for lines of credit. But as Kristen says, this may be a good time for you because you do want to make certain that you seek a counselor on this because you need to look at all options. Yes, the rates are competitively low, but you want to make certain that you are in a position to do so. And if not, gear yourself to be in a position to do so because you could possibly pay an even lower interest rate and decrease your term on your mortgage right now. So that, that is absolutely a great opportunity. And um, let me just say this in closing. I am just um, elated just at, at these Money Mondays with Melissa and just how they've been going and they have been phenomenal information. You all should see the, the chats that's been provided with guests, with attendees that are saying, thank you for this information. So helpful, so helpful. And that's really what this is about. We want to come out of this pandemic better. And so we want to make certain that we are not only being physically healthy, but we are being financially healthy um, during this time. And so I thank our guests for taking time out of their very busy schedules. One thing that I know, and you just heard from Senator Duckworth, and we had State's Attorney Kim Fox and Executive Director Kristen Faust on the line, we have found that it's even more busier now than it was when we were in the office every single day. It is so much work during this pandemic but it's work that is needed and necessary. So I, I do know that our panelists are, are very busy and I thank them for taking time out of their day. Again, as mentioned before, we will be sharing these notes and materials with you via email. And we will send that to all of those that registered for this webinar. Also remember that um, we have a website, chicagocitytreasurer.com where we update it regularly to provide information to you, whether there's financial tips, information about unemployment, access to funds, small business funds, et cetera, you name it, we provide it. And so I thank everyone that participated. And um, also, I think there was a question about the recording that will be available if you want to hear this again. After this webinar, the recording will be available as well. We did record it. Thank you, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you next Monday. Someone asked what the topics were for next Monday. I'm not certain as of yet, but um, I'm sure by tomorrow or so we will know for certain. I think we it is set, but we'll make the announcement over the next day. Thank you, everyone. State's Attorney Kim Fox, Executive Director Kristen Falls. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye everyone. That's today's webinar. Thank you all for attending. You may now disconnect.